In this video, we're going to be building a Jira service management automation rule. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. And also this video is sponsored by my good friends over at Revise. Let's jump into JSM and talk about automation rules. Within JSM, the automation rule experience is exactly the same as it is in Jira software or even Confluence. I really like that Atlassian has brought over the same language. We're essentially going to be in a very familiar territory if you've ever built an automation rule before. Now, because the purpose of this video is to talk about JSM specific automation rules, we're going to focus on triggers that are unique and specific to the automations of JSM. Now, when you're working with automation rules, even within the context of JSM, any type of trigger from a field or an issue created or issues being linked or field values changes, all of those still apply. I want to highlight a couple of triggers that are unique and specific to JSM. So for example, we have this service limit breached, service level agreement threshold breached. And then if we go down even lower, we're going to see that there's a dedicated Jira service management section here where you can do automations based on approvals being completed or even approvals being required. Now we're going to be focusing on the service level agreement. This one's a little bit easier to demonstrate, although the other ones on approvals are also really good. So I encourage you to explore those and try those out. Now, when we are doing a service level breach, this is a little bit of a chicken and egg situation. You do need to have an SLA basically already created. So make sure that you go and create SLAs inside your JSON projects and then come back and do some automations. Otherwise, you're not going to have a very good experience. Now, I'm going to do my time to first response. And what happens with this time to first response is at least the intent. We have a service level agreement that when a request comes into our JSM queues, our agents have a specific time limited amount of time to respond and react and do that initial first like touchback and tell the customer it's OK. We've got your back. Now, if they exceed that, if they breach that time, then we want something to happen because perception is very, very important. And we want to make sure that we're always a customer first, customer friendly organization. And so that time to first response is critical to maintain that really good customer satisfaction. So we're going to be focusing on time to first response because when it is breached, essentially immediately when it's breached, I want to do something. You do have options that if it's going to be breached in the next 30 minutes, 30 hours or 30 days, you can do some reactions or you can also do your trigger if you're breached post, right? So if it's been 30 minutes since you breached or if it's been 30 days or 30 hours since you breached and this doesn't have to be a 30, this can be whatever number you want. Now, just for the context of keeping it easy, I'm just going to say, hey, the moment you're breached, the moment you've elapsed the time, we're going to take some action. So from that, we're going to hit next and then we're going to pick our action. So what do we want to do? What should we do when we breach our SLAs? Well, this next part's really easy because essentially you just got to find something. You got to pick something that is important to you. And so in this particular case, I want to send an email. I want to notify my agent. I want to tell them, hey, time's up, right? <laughs> you should have been doing something. So in here, I'm just simply going to go into two and I'm going to pick my assignee because, hey, this is the person that's responsible for finishing this. And now you can do whatever you want in here. There are smart values that you can use that are essentially just like variables that you can tap into the ticket number, the title, a key, the URL. There's a bunch of different ones. Let me know in the comment section if that's something that's interesting to you, because I can do a video doing an overview of all the different smart values inside of JSM in Jira software for that matter. But for now, we're just going to keep it simple and we're just going to say SLA breached exclamation mark because you can never have enough exclamation marks. And I'm going to say, please check on your ticket exclamation marks double and I'm going to do issue dot URL and that should basically include a link to the ticket so that they can click on it just from that email, be able to jump into it and take action. Once you're done with that, I'm going to hit next and then that's it. It's a very simple automation rule. I'm going to hit turn on. I'm going to give it a name. SLA breached notification. Do something descriptive here. Trust me when I tell you this. It is important that your descriptions and your names are very, very descriptive because when you have 100, 200, 500, 1,000 automation rules, it gets really, really tricky to remember what rule does what, especially also when you go back two, three, four, five years and you got to remember what all these different rules do and which ones you got to turn off and which ones you got to update. 
Give it good names. Trust me, you'll thank me later. I'm gonna turn it on. And then this automation rule is now in effect. Now, I don't want to just focus on the creation of the automation rule because this is great, this is awesome, something you should do. But most importantly, if you think back a couple of months ago, depending on when you're watching this video, Atlassian had a bit of an outage. And there was a big problem that happened in Jura Cloud in February of 2024. And essentially, the automation rules kind of stopped working. And a lot of people try to go in and fix it. Some people don't know to check the status page and they didn't realize that automation rules were not functioning. And Atlassian doesn't really do a good job all the time to notifying people that there's been some problems. So naturally what folks started to do is they started to jump into the JSM and start fixing uh, automation rules. They, they thought something was wrong or whatever the reason may be, but they started changing their automation rules. And then when the data was brought back, when Atlassian was able to bring back and restore the automation rules, there was a mismatch of configurations and bad things happened. Another scenario that happened uh, was that essentially you're working on a new automation rule and all of a sudden it disappeared and you lost based on depending on your timing and your luck, you lost that work that you were doing. And so we never want to be, especially if you're in IT like me, you never want to be in that situation where you lose your hard work because it's not trivial to make some of these. I know I make it look easy, but I do thousands of these, right? But depending on the complexity, depending on the involvement of your automation rules, you want to be very, very mindful of making sure you always have your own copy, making sure you always have the ability to maybe even version control your automation rules because there's been scenarios that I've been in where I make an automation rule, it kind of works, but then we find like a flaw. We find something that doesn't do quite right. So then we got to go back, change it, and then we think we fix it, but then we end up breaking it worse. So then we pivot yet again. And it's like three or four different evolutions before we finally get to an automation rule that we think kind of works only to realize we just wanted the first one to begin with, but you've lost all of that because these are not version control. So my good friends over at Revise, they make it an amazing plugin that I want to walk you through. If you're using automation rules and you've ever dealt with these situations that I just described, or more importantly, if you ever want to avoid going through these situations, you're going to want to pay attention to the rest of this video. So allow me to introduce you to Revise Data Manager. This is going to be a plugin that you're definitely going to want to invest in because it's going to do two things for you. One, it's going to back up your automation rules. And two, it's going to allow you to have versioning of your automation rules. And if you ever need to essentially go back in time to a previous backup, you're going to be able to pull those configurations back and bring them in. Now, as an added bonus, what you're also allowed to do and able to do and something you cannot do in production today is if you have automation rules that you've created like in your sandbox, because that's really where you should be testing things out, this plugin is going to allow you to bring those in from that sandbox and bring them into your production environment without having to recreate them. And trust me when I tell you, this is something you really want, especially if you've ever gone through the motions of making those automation rules in the sandbox and manually having to redo them in production. It's very, very error prone. Use something like Revise. Now I'm going to show you how the automation backups work so that you can back them up. And in a future video, I'm going to show you how to do some of these sandbox to production migrations. I'm going to show you how to do some of the restorations. But in the rest of this video, now that we've created our automation rule, we want to save it. We want to preserve it because it is no fun when Atlassian has an outage or some other third party, something out of your control messes with your work. And so I want you to be protected and I want you to be smart about this, especially because again, I'm just doing it for one rule, but when you have a thousand rules, 2000 rules, when you're in a big enterprise, this is something you definitely want because you will not realize you need something like this until it happens to you. And my friends, that's when it's a little too late. So it's better to be prepared than to be sorry. And so let me show you how easy it is to enable backups with revised data manager. So, all you got to do here is come down to the settings. When you come into revise, you're going to notice that your backups are disabled for assets, asset configurations and automation rules. Well, in this video, we're going to be focusing on turning on those automation rule backups. So I'm going to click on this little pencil here, and this is going to allow me to slide the slider for enabling automation rules. I need to go get myself an API token. Now I will link down below how to do this. You're essentially going to click on this link. I'm going to do a right click. This is going to take me to a place to get my token. So I'm going to create an API token. I'm going to call this revise. I'm going to click on create. 
I'm going to copy this, but I'm going to paste the token here. And once you have all that, I'm just going to click on add. Once you've successfully have done this, you will get a credentials added successfully. And now we can go back to our settings, back to backup, and we're going to come back to the Zeta backups. So we're going to click on the pencil here. And this time we're going to turn on automation rules and stick around because in future videos, we're going to do those assets. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and drop a like in this video. And let me know in the comments specifically if the assets configurations would be helpful for you. So we're going to click on next. We're going to click on yes. And that's it. Now the automation rules can be backed up. So as you can see, I can just wait until my next scheduled backup. But because I want to show you that this is actually working, I'm going to click on backup now. This is going to take me to my backup dashboard. And all I need to do is click on the backup button here. And I am now going to essentially click the backup button now. And as you can see, I'm going to click backup now. And this is going to trigger a backup. And I'm going to look inside of this backup. I'm going to give it a second here. As you can see, this is doing its thing. Another confirmation that you can see is that here within Jira configurations, there's automation rules are now included. So we're going to be taking a look at the jobs over here. And once this job kicks off, it does take a second here to queue off. As you can see, this one's running. So I can go take a look at that. And you're going to notice that under miscellaneous, there is now an automation rule section. And so now your automation rules are now included and they're going to be backed up. If I show you my history, I'm going to go to another job from just even this morning. So I'm going to click on this 84620. You're going to notice that there's NA for automation rules. And we're going to compare that versus the job that is currently running. And it's going to basically not tell us NA for automation rules, but it's going to give us hopefully a green check mark. So let's wait for that. So once the backup is complete, you'll notice that you get a green check mark. This is really, really good, especially when we compare it to our other job. As you can see, 27 of them are backed up. And if I click into this, this is going to take me to my automation rules. And as long as my automation rule is on this list, we're going to check and see. Here's my SLA breach notification one that I made just 15 minutes ago then we can rest assured that our automation rules are backed up. So that's it for this video. It's a little long, so I want to make sure I cut this up into another video because in the next video, I'm going to show you how to restore. I'm going to go in and delete my automation rule and I'm going to bring it back using revise. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Make sure you drop a like to this video and make sure you stick around, come back because you're not going to want to miss out on that next video. That's it for this video and I'll see you in the next one.